Sanje sube sipege nelo mkaka wosu mabiznisi. Spring age ya sungulu wa mandomba za nyana mabili, uguze besi zongu kazulu la esi nginga zompagati. We come up with ideas for corporates and that's what spring age is all about. O Leslie Williams ye na wakala i chose a hub, uguze asize ama biznisi ya mangani, genda uyu msebe inzi. We have all the basic infrastructure they need, so your desk, your Wi-Fi. Lambo soma biznisi bazo dobe vaga shele e studio, uguza betole imono yo kulisa izi nkampani za abo. If you're not growing, uh, you're moving backwards. Business ibom pagati. Baka amate ba oxiza ugu kazulula ezinki ngaza sem pagati ni. Genga sibe pinde benze inzalo. Loko kubale kile esizwe ni sifane ni ningizim Afrika. Gogo shogwe zibala the national treasury. Kuto shogwe beno forty two percent. Wamba dollar abanga pente gwe miaga engu tedi abanga sebenz. No, I haven't heard of social entrepreneurship. No, I haven't heard about social entrepreneurship. I don't have an idea of a social entrepreneurism. Not at all. Gogusho kwe Global Entrepreneurship Monitor. Isibalo sosoma biznisi apasiza umpaga ati ningizima Afrika siku 1.8%. Loko kuhambi sana ni mnoto yezizwe ezifana ni Brazil ni China. When we talk about things social, we talk about like the community, am I right? Oh, I have never heard of social. What is it again? Making money through business around communities, developing some small companies. I would say it's probably NGOs because a social entrepreneur. Also, my business is bomb pagati. Bahamba pampi lukugwa ka ushinjo empagati ni. Gogo mafani na banyo so my business is abakala uksebenza wa bongenzuzo. Bona ba pinde beketo ukwenza ushinjo oluse empagati ni. Social entrepreneurship is a new phenomenon that is growing amongst young business startups in South Africa. Kotoa age ukwani ngoselo nzwe i global entrepreneurship monitor. Luko mbisa ugutige i South Africa umaguza gyo nagele nkundi. Sisese muva ga kulu. Logo uge se nga tika guzo shinja. Jongo baba ntaba shage ba like haya. Be kombisa utando unge nagego nagele mkaka. Oso ma business pe tupa na mtanja babini. Unel siwe no relimu. Pasaba nza gyo nagele nkundi. Nge nga tukupa vagashele ma ovi sabo. Gibone guti business labo li kulu mangani. Ako ubugele mbugele la pekaya. I met Raleen's mom, Raleen's brother was born, and then after that Raleen was born. You know, so it was like, it was a family. So I was born in Amtata, which is in the Transkei in the Eastern Cape. 1986, the good year. I was born in Tembisa, Tembisa Hospital. In Tembisa, my parents used to live in Tembisa. I grew up in Alexandra Township. Raylene was brought up in the house, meaning that Raylene used to know to set the table and how a fork and a knife is supposed to be. She was, uh, I would say, a very, a very loving um, individual from when she was young. Uh, she had a lot of friends. Like, there will always be friends at our house. She was a leader. She was a very ordered child. She just about knew how systems work. I wonder if saw a monto of no food that each and everything. Raylene used to like putting on the heels. She used to like being high heels, you know, and, and makeup. A time of my life that I can think of that was really special was when I started going into modeling. But really like competitive modeling. So you do the modeling competitions. Everybody in my family was involved. 
my brother was involved, either driving me somewhere, sorting something out for me. My mother was like my manager, eh? and I'm talking about I'm 12 years old, I'm not famous, I'm not anything, but my mom was the organizer, the project manager. My father, funny enough, helped me design my clothing. All the modeling clothes I ever wore was my dad and I sitting and thinking about what look are we going for. And it was such a special time because, you know, whether we won or lost that competition actually didn't matter. It was just like everybody putting their hands onto, we're going for this thing and how are we gonna support Rayleigh? If I look at uh, what my strengths are, I think I relate very well to people and I, I love including people. So when things are not inclusive and a little bit unfair, I get, you know, frustrated. So I think um, that's that's my, my qualities. <laughs> The one thing that I don't like about her is the fact that she's very messy. <laughs> I am. Like she, she, you can't, you can't, she, can't, she comes to my house, my house is like in order. By the time she leaves, the pillows are on the floor, the TV's on, the radio's on. But other than that, she, she's, she's awesome. Eh? Rosebank, Epart Avenue, at Tuzan in a fire station. Kuna kona go soma pisnisi be tu be seven zela kona. Bagu lo mukaka lona go zama pisnisi lona o wanda yoge like hi. Bagu zama uti social entrepreneurship. Gizo wen gene langa paga tingo kusa ne nabo. Gizo uti pisnisi labo kulu mangan and find out futu uti what is so social about the business. Nice young vibrant space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Could we offer you something to drink? Yes, please. Um, coffee would do. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll get that. How many sugars do you want? Three, please. Oh, sweet. I love it. Good. Thank you. <laughs> According to my knowledge, you guys are in social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. That means, you know, you approach corporates and you give them ways that they can move South Africa forward. Yes. Please just elaborate on that because that sounds like a mouthful to me. Mm -hmm come up with ideas for corporates, mm -hmm. but it's really corporates that want to build something new, something fresh, that want to be part of building South Africa, and that's what Spring Age is all about. Mm -hmm. So we use quite a structured innovation process to help them do that. So first, it starts with a question. A mm -hmm. corporate organization will have some sort of curiosity, maybe they have a challenge, they might say, well, we in security, we're looking for new solutions to take security to a township, mm -hmm. for example but they need different kind of people to think up those ideas. That's where Spring Edge comes in. Yeah. So if you will look with me on our process here, it starts mm. with a big question mm. that a corporate might have, and then at Spring Edge we say, we're gonna go find the people to help you think around that, and we call them Springers. Mm -hmm. They're young people from different parts of South Africa, they have different spaces of influence. So, Sia, if you were a client, for example, you'd come to Spring Edge and say, you've got a challenge Sorry, or you've got a question. Coffee? Thanks, I. So you might have a challenge or a question, a corporate, right? Yeah. And you might need new ideas on how to come up, one, with ideas, insights, but you might need an implementation plan on those ideas. Mm -hmm. You'd come to Spring Age. We would then go and find what we call Springers. Let's call them a brain trust for now. A customized group of young people who will think with you and we will run what we call a spring break. Yeah. And that's where the magic happens. That is a three hour concentrated time of coming up with really great insights. Cool. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about insights, we look at the root causes. We look at what are the consequences if that question is not answered. Mm -hmm. We look at what innovative ideas, it's like a crazy space. Yeah. Once we come out of that spring break, mm -hmm. the outcome is five really great ideas, but they're not just ideas, they're actual solutions mm -hmm. to the question that we had up front. Mm -hmm. And the way we present those solutions is in a high level business case. Mm -hmm. So we'd be able to go back to the client and say, from our spring break, we think this is an incredible solution, this is the opportunity for it, this is how we see it making money, this is how it's piloted, this is what it would take to make it happen. Once we've presented the solutions to the client, the client then has an option to say, I love it, I'm opting into the next phase. Yeah. And the next phase we call a spring refinery. Mm. 
Spring Refinery is a two-month process where we pilot the idea. So now it's going from just an idea to actually building it. It may be an application we have to build. It may be a project we have to pilot in a community. But it really is to test how feasible this project is. Take me through your Kinte Nienza, your Foborn, up until the implementation stages. We went to this client, to SAP, and um, the question that they had was, how do we reduce irresponsible drinking amongst youth? So we went, uh, we sold our services to SAP. Saham, we can help you guys yeah. come up with a solution for this problem of irresponsible drinking. What we requested them to do as young people was to help us sort of like engage with young people around um, what do they think can be appropriate steps taken by a brewer of our size to assist in dealing with alcohol abuse by young people. Spring Age Group, really, they, they're very professional in what they do. Um, and, and, and they're able to execute their, their, their work in the most pro professional way. And that basically gives us value. Because the reason that we've invested time engaging with them is because what they've delivered for us is something that we can look at and be able to sort of like unpack further to see how it can be of assistance in addressing the issues that I've highlighted. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we, we do sell, the process less Kunmangai is spring break. It's not something that we do for fun to come up with ideas. It's a, it's a consulting uh, kind of okay. uh, way of working mm -hmm. with our clients. So we do charge them for iskati say to, iskati sell our springers to utbatabangi. You know, it's it's not something that we do for free. I see it's shy. I'm going to be every year. I'm going to see that there's two other young people that are working here. Yes. Yes. yes, go for it. How you guys doing? Good, and you? Very, very well. Can I have a seat quickly because I'd sure. like to talk to you guys? Yeah, sure, you can take mine. All right. Could you please just take me through what you guys do here at Spring Age? What we as a team have decided to call me an activity maker. I do office support. I do a lot of project planning. So, for example, if they early on they spoke about spring breaks, I'll be in charge of recruitment. I'll be in charge of liaising with the springers. So at Spring Age, I run um, our social media, so your Twitter, your Facebook. Um, that's how I pre Previously, I'll ask you for your Twitter handle so we can follow. Come yeah. on, be in the 21st century. Follow back. Yeah. Follow back. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically, I handle that. I also um, handle updating vlogs and vlogs for our website and just making sure that our website is updated and everything is current. Speaking about following each other and Twitters and whatnot, I'm going to follow you guys back right now. Awesome. But you also need to follow Making Moves as well. Okay. So, we already follow Making Moves. Oh, so you follow yes. Making Moves. Guys, for giving me your time. No, thank you. Right, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye. Thank you. In terms of taking us seriously, um, I actually do have an example of one CEO that we went to see. He sat back and he was like, sorry, I need to tell you something. So I'm sitting there thinking, what is he going to say? And he's like, I'm finding it very hard to take you seriously right now because you're young and you're female. Although his social entrepreneurship, Kumkako se mushaga kuluge like I. Kurelin, Lonel Siu, Bonage Bakunga is bint, Bakukula in Pilos Abanti, Gulum Kakaba Seven Zelagon. These young innovators, Basta Studio and Jenga Manch, Bakulumisana again a co host here to get by H. Lagu to Hambo Labo, Kuzonagaleza Mapiznis, Lohan Beganja. Thanks a lot, Sia. I am hanging out with Raylin and Lenel Siwe, who are social entrepreneurs. Ladies, you could be working at some big corporate. Yeah. making lots of money, why social entrepreneurship? Well, I guess for me, uh, the reason to choose social entrepreneurship is the notion of wanting to make a difference in our country, but still learning how to make money and grow a business. And also the freedom to be able to mm. think up a new idea and be able to execute it and get someone to pay for it um, is something that's really interesting for me and to basically make a difference in Africa and in our country. Mm. Okay. Apparently you guys have a rap song that you <laughs> have together. Do you want to hit it? I'll right now. It right now. We, yeah, yeah. we sing it for paid audiences. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, get I'll, a pass. Okay, 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 okay. I'll make a dream. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things in our business, we actually do have a rap song. Yeah, so what and it's not us singing at all, actually, on It's our friends. And we... Uh, one of the things we do is co collaboration is our approach. And we thought to do a fun project yeah. where a South African rapper collaborated with our friend in Germany and one in Poland. And mm. 
basically they sang about everything we stand for. So young people, our value, our dreams, mm. going for it. It was, it was just a fun project. Yeah. I guess I'm not going to get to hear this. Not rap. today. No, <laughs> we, can, we can send you a link. Um, so you guys tell me, I mean, it sounds like you have a lot of fun. Mm. Um, what value do you really add to mm. businesses? Um, you know, am I going to make more money as an entrepreneur? Am I going to run a better organization? by engaging with your your organization right mm -hmm. absolutely i think our key thing is being able to link with young people or springers as we call them for a business makes complete sense for a few reasons the freshness of approach mm. and thinking that they don't always own because of a, being a corporate they don't have the time and the space to innovate and think differently so just freshness in perspective um, also you are building new products or potentially a new business with people who are going to be your consumers and are your consumers and are really a big consumer market so the relevance around that mm. and um, and your competitive edge and the work that we do is really about not once off but it's saying how do you tap into this market and get these fresh ideas over an ongoing period which gives you a really cool competitive edge in the industry but also you are doing it with conscious young people so what you're building is potentially something that is going to do good mm. which makes you come across beautifully and yes you're going to make money because you're building something that the market loves mm. And just to add on that, mm. I think we're trying to prove a point. Um, young people are always looked at as uh, this problem all over Africa. We've got so many young people and everybody freaks out about it. Mm. We're trying to tell the world that young people are a key resource that you need. So if you build the future with the future, right. you're already at a good standing of being able to be a business that is successful in the future. So it's definitely going to give you money for your run. Okay. So mm. now... Um I'm trying to get my head around uh -huh. mm. uh, 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 what you guys do because you sit in a weird space um, between kind of an advertising agency that comes up and they create communication, uh -huh. um, sometimes targeted at young people, mm. and generally uh, a space inhabited by young, funky, you know, fairly intelligent people. Right. And then there's the kind of big consulting companies, the McKinsey's, the Price Waterhouse Coopers, all of those guys that offer. Right. consulting services mm -hmm. and you sit somewhere in the middle yeah. uh, I mean uh, do people know what box to put you in and do they take you seriously when mm -hmm. you walk into to you know to, to, to big meetings right. and and you're selling solutions that are also being offered by businesses that turn over hundreds of millions mm. yeah. they can't clearly put us in a box because as you're saying we are different so we do sit in a lot of different mm. spaces um, one of the things that uh, we had a conversation with uh, one of these big corporate CEOs and he was like, you know, uh, in the past there was a phone, a phone was created and a telephone and it had lines and, you know, and then now we've got iPhones and this kind of thing and you guys are almost like in the space of you've got this kind of old thing that people are used to, but you've probably created the iPhone of this version of this thing. So some people really do get it and see the difference mm. of where we sit and it's uncommon because we bring two different worlds together. In terms of taking us seriously, um, I actually do have an example of one CEO that we went to see. And as we were having a conversation with him, he sat back and he was like, sorry, I need to tell you something. So I'm sitting there thinking, what is he going to say? And he's like, I'm finding it very hard to take you seriously right now. Not because <laughs> of what you're saying. What you're saying is very important. But because you're young and you're female, and I'm a Zulu man, and it's very hard for me to think about my billion-dollar company doing business with you so I just needed to tell you that and I'm sure a lot of people think it and they don't tell you so I just need to take myself out of that um, mindset yeah. and start uh, really taking it seriously which is very refreshing for him to be able to tell us that but we could have a frank conversation on that afterwards so some people do some people don't and mm. you know we just keep going but I, I, think I take you guys seriously Thank you. Yeah. And you know <laughs> and you know what it's about actually? It's getting easier and easier to be taken seriously. Mm. One, because um, young people we're getting better at communicating this unmatched value mm. that young people have. How do you get more clients? What do you guys need to be doing better right. in order mm. to, to, to to firstly, you know, pass that credibility issue? Yeah. Uh, but also just to get the meetings and, and be able to show people what you can do. Right. Yeah. I think um, one of the things is we have to 
So there's two things I can think of is mm. this product or this thing. People love to buy products. One of our biggest things has been trying to sell an intangible and that's mm. been hard. So getting better, we've got a spring break process, which is a very structured way of being able to say, this is what we'll do and this is what you'll get in the end. So getting better is about making sure we get to the end in a way that we in fact exceed the expectations of our client. So getting better right to the end and being able to deliver mm. a project that is awesome and ideas that are scalable, that start meet the dream that we talk about in the room. Why are you struggling to get companies to get to the implementation phase? Um, I think one of the reasons is because companies don't know how to innovate within themselves. Mm. So they are stifled by their own red tape and they don't know how to start new things. So we try and encourage them to start new things and, and to try it, you know. They're not agile. Big businesses are s big, slow machines. Right. And I think that's probably one of the reasons. And maybe from our perspective, it's us being able to speak the business language um, with the client and be able to say, you know, if you do this, this is what's going to do in terms of the language that they understand. Ladies, thank you very much for hanging out with me. This is okay. the first part of our discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand you over to someone that is very good at helping companies get out there yes. and, and sell themselves to, to the corporate world. And then we can chat afterwards and you can tell me how your coaching session went. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. I'm now going to be handing the ladies over to Navasha Naidu from Platinum Public Relations, who's going to give them tips on how they can sell their services to corporate organizations. And while they're doing that, let's get inspired by Wisdom Nugget. I'll see you in a moment. You have to believe in your aspiration because if you do not believe in yourself, no one else will. And the truth of the matter is what you bring about is what you think about. And that is one of the fundamental laws as well. It is called the law of attraction. If you want to achieve success in anything, you need to dream big. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. Anyone who wants to become a successful entrepreneur chooses to become a successful entrepreneur. She wasn't a follower. She didn't do things because others did it. That, um, means, that means she was stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I was very insecure, very uncertain in myself. Sipinde suwa mgele mbugeli. Sikale sa kombiso suma business betu. Ababili. Ama kosa zane ano mfuto. Apuma e spring age. We also gave you an overview of what social entrepreneurship is about. Usuma business wa etuge wa esbili. Na yo seven za guwa nage lo mkaka lo eskulu mangao. Ika malake. Hulezli. I business lake. I impact hub. Nge nga tukot misana nae. Ngazi uguti business lake. Li kulu mangao. various experiences growing up you know so I think moving from secure home with with which a typical nuclear family uh, parents and and uh, brother to parents being um, getting divorced to being thrown into I think quite a bit of turbulence and then finding security in a different kind of way also within the broader family this is a young child even a young child was always very independent she always had a mind of her own. That, um, means, that means she was stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. What I mean by that is that she wasn't a follower. She didn't do things because others did it. She was also very secure then. She wasn't as confident as she is now, I think, even though she knew what she wanted. So it's nice to have seen the change from then to now. I think I was, I was very insecure, very uncertain in myself. I think I had a lot of thoughts. Um, thoughts about myself, thoughts about how the world should be, but I, I didn't have the courage to speak up about it. My family is very loud, <laughs> very, very loud, and it once speaks things about a chaotic almost Greek family um, where everybody speaks at the same time over lunch. That's what I, I grew, grew up in. That, I think, was also part of the reason why I became a facilitator. I'm very keen about bringing people's voices to the surface and having people supporting people in having a dialogue because sometimes I think my family speaks at the same time we find it hard to really hear each other so for me as a, as a young insecure person it was hard for me to get my voice across in that way. Um, my mother was very involved in fundraising for the church whether it be selling cake or 
old clothes. So I guess she was constantly growing up, um, surrounded by the type of service for the community. I think I've been to about 26 countries thus far. Um, with a few of them, it's been repeat visits. So I think various cultures do influence my way of, of doing and thinking. And I think it's about, for me, matching which parts of those cultures match my values and my beliefs. I live in Bramfontein, I work in Bramfontein, and lately I'm playing a lot in Bramfontein. I want to dare myself to hop on my bike more in the inner city. In my work, I'm surrounded by people all the time. I tend to appreciate more quiet spaces outside of that. So some of the, my hobbies include cooking. Love walking in nature, so I have a good old pair of old hiking boots. Love hopping on my bike and just like letting go of all, all sorts of thinking. I read a lot and, I, and I'm a, an active blogger. Good morning, Lizzie. Hi, Sia. How are you doing? I'm good. Really good to meet you. Hey, right, finally we meet. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, do you want to come in? Yes, ma'am. Lead the way. Over here we have a basically a wall that's curated by our members. Mm -hmm. They post all sort of all sorts of activity that they're up to. Okay. So over here, one of our members hosted an event in, in Alexandra with a whole bunch of local women trying to bring the, the culture of theater oh, wow. to Alex. Over here we have our members wall. Uh-huh. So these are all the people that work here? Yeah, most, most of most them. Most of them, yeah. okay. Barbara has a, a cafe called Hay Cafe based on Hildra Entrepreneurship Initiative. And it's the first cafe we have in Africa that, that has the beneficiaries running the cafe. So the whole mission is to eradicate homelessness in, in Johannesburg. Okay, and this is everybody. So yeah, so this is the main part of our co-working space. Mm -hmm. Members come to work, they bring their laptops, we have all the basic infrastructure they need. So your desk, your Wi-Fi, your access to a telephone. And uh, this is where most of the work, day-to-day -day work happens. The space also transforms into event space depending on the size of the event. So how many members work from this space? So on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, it averages. It's always unpredictable. So around 15 to 20 people. Sometimes it's three people. Yeah. But um, our members don't come to always work. Some of them are out there in the field doing work, mm -hmm. and then come back just to spend time with the community or to catch up with admin sometimes. What made you decide you want to start your own you know, initiative like this? Firstly, I think social entrepreneurship has been a practice for millennia over here. Yeah. It's not a new thing. I think people have always been resourceful about how they go about creating change in society. Mm -hmm. But I do think we need an organized way and, and a place where people can go and feel some sort of alignment with fellow people with a shared value system, where there is a, a shared intent on creating change in society. So for me, the importance of having Impact Hub Johannesburg is to have a place where disruptors and innovators can go and say, hey, you know, I'm part of that, and we can share knowledge and resources. Our primary client is any one individual or organization who has a desire to create impact in society. They may not have the right idea yet. Sometimes people just come here with an intent and want to learn from other people. Sometimes they have an early stage on, on, uh, idea or an advanced idea. So we'll work with you from the place where you're at and support you in developing that idea until fully realizing it. And we want to get to the point of scale. Um, Impact Hub is also part of an international network. So we have 47 hubs in major cities around the world with over 8,000 members. Wow. So it's really about being active within the community and using um, the knowledge and opportunity that's both local and abroad, abroad and sharing experience uh, yeah. to create change. Hi. How are you doing, gentlemen? Very well, yourself. Hey, very well. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. How long have you guys been operating from the hub? Uh, three and a half years from now, mm -hmm. and um, ever since, yeah. And how has everything been for you guys, you know, moving, operating from here, being part of the hub? How has it impacted you as, you know, 
entrepreneurs and how has it impacted you as people that work from here as well? I think from my side, uh, on, on a personal level, I mean, there's been a lot of space for development. You have so many mentors in the space. Um, everyone, I mean, aside from Reynold, of course, who is my business partner and, and, and direct mentor, you have access to so many people from so many different spaces that just have so much more experience than you do and in many cases are very intelligent and have so many opportunities. More than that, it also has given us the opportunity to develop others. And I think that for us is our greatest fulfillment. From the top of your head, if you had to tell me who are, you know, one or two of your clients, are they companies that we know? One of our member uh, yeah. organizations is a, a campaign called Shake the World, oh. and it's had quite a bit of media exposure, so that is something that, that you may align with. Yeah. So I've been quite excited about that because it, one, promotes the values of the Millennium Development Goals, uh, but it's also an income generation activity, so yeah. Women based in, in, in KZN make the bracelets mm -hmm. and it is sold mainstream. This is actually a, a product of value that's taken to market. We work several times with the Impact Hub. Uh, they've come in on several occasions to help us build relationships with communities so that we understand what's happening um, in the wider spectrum of things. The value that we get from working with the Hub is at a very personally transformative level. Because they are creating experiences for us where real people in our programs get to meet real people in communities that we wouldn't otherwise touch. How do you guys generate income for your business? So the one is we do have membership and membership is a is a payment that right. that's a month to month payment based on the amount of hours our members use. That's the first one. The second part is programming. We have a variety of events that are both member driven initiatives mm -hmm. as well as some of our own content that we put forward. Mm -hmm. So those are often open to both the public as well as um, our members. Mm -hmm. So our members always pay, um, have a, pay a reduced amount for, for those services mm -hmm. and the public pay to come to those events. Then we do venue hire. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an accelerator program. So again, if external entrepreneurs would like to be uh, to have the idea accelerated and, and take them to the point of investment readiness, they can sign up to that as well. Leslie, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come in and interact with you and get to find out more about what you know social entrepreneurs really do. Awesome. Um. People know are starting to know what social entrepreneurship is, which is fantastic. And I'd like to believe that we were one of the pioneers in the country to, to get word out to look at what it is and, and how it needs support. It does always question us, force us to question what is our relevance at this time. If you're not growing, uh, you're moving backwards. Mm. Social entrepreneurs, our finding in a manama business, Lawa Akona Langa Panj, or when close to our good ends in man. Kumbula pen, our social entrepreneurs, Gumela Kamgen Angel, as was two tricks again pillows about no country about seven Zelagona. Lokuge, Kutala Futian and Kinga, Gulli Lagitzi, Jongo Bagi, Ingeco in Tetu, Nem Komegu to Musevens Agona Gelum Kaka, Usevens Aranjan. As in Yagazay and Kinga Gales Ules the Apaganina Zogi with business lag. Jenga manje use studio ukokusana no zagwe tu upeps. Bakwa ninga ge in kinga zakege as a business lag. I am sitting here with Leslie from the Impact Hub and we're talking a little bit about what you do and how you do it. Uh, Sia mentioned that one of the challenges you have in this country as a social entrepreneur is that there's no framework, legislative mm -hmm. framework, there's no law that governs mm -hmm. what you do. Tell me about that and why it's a challenge. Yes, it, it is a tough one. Um, the old school route is to set up a charity. The problem with, the, with charity is that when your money runs out, you have to go and find money again. Um, so it's smarter to make money while doing good. The trouble with that is that if you set up a traditional um, company, you end up paying quite a bit of tax for that. So it doesn't always make sense. You're paying all this tax and you're doing good for society. So it would be fantastic if we had a, a um, an entity that would allow us to do both at the same time. So many people are now setting up not-for-profit companies and for-profit companies with a trust overseeing the two. So now tell me what's the difference. There is an NGO yes. which makes no money and depends on donations, right? Then there's social entrepreneurship and then there's entrepreneurship. What's the difference? Yes. So within NGO, um, and you can make money as an NGO, but you need to make sure that all the money stays within the organization. And in fact, some donors expect you to spend all the money before the financial year is over. So that doesn't make sense because you need to then go out and look for money again, which is not sustainable. 
at the extreme for-profit normal company side, all your money is made for the shareholder in mind, so the guy who put up the initial money. So for a social entrepreneur, someone who wants to do good, you're not making money for the guy who's given the money. You're making money to make, take care of the mission or the reason why you set up, be it poverty alleviation or climate change. So where the social entrepreneur comes in, it's, it's a bridge between these two worlds. It wants to make money and do good, but the money is often reinvested into the mission of the organization. And right now we don't have an entity in South Africa that allows you to do that. Okay, so yeah. you still make a profit, you run as a business, but you reinvest the profit into doing good. Yes. And then all you do is really pay yourself a salary Yes. Uh, to continue working. And it can be a fair sal salary market rate, um, but the, the mission is not very, it's not profit focused. It's more about how you use the money. So one of the things we do here is just kind of explore some of the challenges you're having in your business. You are having challenges. What are they? Sure. So we are at the point now where people know, are starting to know what social entrepreneurship is, which is fantastic. And I'd like to believe that we were one of the pioneers in the country to to get word out to look at what it is and, and how it needs support. So there are more players who have come into the market who are doing quite similar work to us. Not exactly, but it does always question us, force us to question what is our relevance at this time and what is the next level of service that we need to provide to, to social entrepreneurs. So I'd say that is one challenge. Another challenge, like most businesses, be it social ventures or normal businesses, is taking that leap from being a startup, early stage business, into being more established and really getting ready to grow. So what are you going to do differently for the next three months? Well, again, a lot of it starts with mindset. So I'm literally daring myself to release quite a substantial amount of equity. Um, and for someone who has been working on, I've been working on my venture for over five years. Um, so that has been a tough thing for me, but I've made the decision. So now that that's done, I'm sure everything else is, will go faster. I mean, all these fantastic people have been showing up and I'm busy looking at, at selecting the right kind of partner to come on board. So that's the first. The second thing is that um, we've got quite a bit of su uh, supportive community um, who have been loyal to our work and, and does appreciate what we've done for them. Um, so we're working with our members and the public to define our next level of service offering. Okay, so you haven't quite figured out what the next level of service offering We're is. We're actually yet. designing it at the moment. Leslie, thank you so much for sharing so openly about your business. I'm now going to introduce you to someone who's going to talk to you and take you through a mentorship session, and then I'll chat to you after that and see if anything's shifted. Sure, fantastic. All right. Leslie's now going to spend some time with Dr. Mdu Gama, CEO of Result in Finance, who's going to give her some tips on how she can overcome the challenges that her business faces and we'll talk to her after the coaching session for feedback. In a moment, however, Nelisiwe and Raylene will join us to give us feedback from their coaching session. Back in the studio, I'm sitting with the ladies, Nelisiwe and Raylene. Ladies, was your session helpful? Very. Uh Absolutely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you guys cover? Well, basically from uh, her background, I think she gave us a lot of input around how we can take our business to the next level mm -hmm. and um, looking at public relations and how we sell ourselves out to other businesses and also other young people in our country. Mm. Okay. Practically, Navasha, what do these ladies need to do? Firstly, um, as I explained to them, they are the brand and they need to be the, the champions of their own brand. So they need to go out there and be spokespersons for the brand. Um, and one of the ways that we could do that is actually profiling the good news stories and their case and case study, profiling their case studies and the projects that they have done mm. um, in the media to business publications and uh, specifically to their youth, youth publications. Mm. Um, and getting the brand out there, let's start talking about this. Mm. Let's start inspiring businesses and uh, young leaders to be like these two young ladies and, and to be part of the movement. Mm. And I think that's what, that's what we want, what they want to achieve. Mm. And um, um, as I explained is that credibility is so important in this industry. Mm. And being um, in business uh, f uh, for three years, it's important 
that they profile what they've been able to achieve in those three years because that's what clients want to see. Mm. And I think one of the uh, other very important uh, points that I've made here to the ladies is that at some point we all need a business coach. Mm. We need to be mentored. We need to look at what we want to achieve, our personal goals and our business goals. Mm. Um, and it's always important to look for someone that has always been inspirational to us mm. as people and say, that's who I want to, uh, that's who I aspire to be like in the next few years. And write to that person. Call that person, you'll never know. Um, they'll probably you know, not take your call today or tomorrow, but they will respond. Mm. And you could end up being mentored by someone that you've always been inspired by. Yeah. Very good. Awesome, thank you. Fantastic, uh, and uh, any parting shots from you guys? Um, Anything you've walked away with today? Yeah. I think what was really important to me, what you say to us outside, was looking at the results. Um, it's just clicked for us that sometimes we talk about the other things, the fuzzy yeah. things that happen in our business, mm. but the results mm. is actually what Measuring the clients, results. yeah, what yeah. the clients mm. want to see. see. So that's something that I'm taking yeah. away. Mm. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I think for me, it's it is about all the time walking the path and understanding the value and then being able to articulate it, document it, and then tell it to the right people. Mm -hmm. And that's not just gonna happen by mistake. We actually have to be quite deliberate about it. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about it being quite strategic and being clear about who we wanna link with and what we wanna say to them. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's a lot that we can go home and just like consolidate and think about how to take it to market. Ladies, thank you very much for spending time with us on Making News. We really appreciate it. I love what you guys are doing. You're essentially just creating a platform and saying, if you give young people a chance, they can create solutions for the future of this continent. And you've turned that into a business. So I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. After the break, we find out how Leslie from Impact Hub's coaching session went with Dr. Mdu Gama. For you to take the business to the next level, you need to bring the kind of new ideas, new people that are going to bring in new ideas. Let me stop you there and just pick up on that. I think it's very important to note that we're not talking about Leslie's business as something that's not working. Not at all. It is working. We wouldn't be but here. But the question is, how do you take it from where it is now to the next level? Welcome back to Making Moves. Leslie from Impact Hub is also back from her coaching session with Dr. Mdu Gama. Mdu? Yes. Shabunyan Khutmat? Ah, Tunja. Ah, Shaw Matal. So, talk me through what you found when you were assessing uh, Leslie's business. We had a very interesting session with Leslie. And firstly, I must mention that she's been in business for four years. And therefore, it means there's something that Leslie is doing right. A number of new ventures don't finish two years. And therefore, we just needed to build on the foundation that she's created. And the focus of my session with her was actually to acknowledge that the foundation is there, but how does she move to the next level? Those are the issues that we basically deliberated upon. Let, let me stop you there and just pick up on that. I think it's very important to note that we're not talking about Leslie's business as something that's not working. Not at all. It is working. We wouldn't be but here. But the question is, how do you take it from where it is now to the next level? Yes. Um, because if you're not growing, uh, you're moving backwards. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the focus of, of, of our discussion, and that was the focus of the coaching session. Of course. Mm. And the first issue that we discussed related to the legislation. I know that she seems to be a bit concerned that the legislation is not necessarily conducive for entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs in particular. And my advice to her was that, you know, that's actually the nature of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs have to do the best they can within the limited, you know, constraints that they operate in. And as, as I'm listening to you talk and, and listening to you a little bit earlier, Leslie, does that not create an opportunity? Is there no opportunity to begin to, if you're having that challenge, other social <coughs> entrepreneurs are having that challenge, is there an opportunity to, who's providing services yeah. and helping them 
the, 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 the social entrepreneurs and the hubs themselves do what they do better? Is that not an opportunity? Sure, totally. And, and I think um, one of the, the, the qualities of a social entrepreneur is that if, if there isn't something that works in the system, you either create the system or you challenge it. Mm. And I think that the, the wisdom that, that I have is that don't focus on the constraints, work with it. So that I'll, I will continue to do. But outside of Impact Hub and, and with the, the knowledge that Impact Hub has already, I will continue to work with, with other enabling organizations around uh, crafting policy and, and challenging, um, especially within the National Development Plan. There is an opportunity to, to influence when how policy evolves. Uh, Dr. Kama, any parting shots for our audience? Anything to say to, to you know, like Leslie, to the aspirant as entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs watching your show? Well, for me, the message that I'm sending to people that want to be entrepreneurs is that they must simply go out there and make things happen. Let's stop moaning. Guys, thank you very, very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, keep watching. I hope you watch Making Moves. Me too. And, and give us feedback on what you think of the show thank you. so that we're getting challenged as well. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Today's episode shows that entrepreneurship is not only about selling a product. Sometimes all you need to find is a cause within your community and generate a profit from it while helping others. Keep watching Making Moves for more business advice and be inspired. Till next week, cheers for now. Being on Making Moves has been quite a moment of introspection. Um, I think there are stuff that you, you think in your head, but until you've, you've questioned and been questioned on it and, and challenged, it doesn't really become real. The experience that we've had uh, being on Making Moves has been a really, really interesting and exciting one. One, because uh, we get to look at our business from an external point of view mm. and really learn about the gaps that we have in order to take us to the next level. From our coaching session, I learned that it always boils down to team. So if you want to start a business or take the business to the next level, you need to have the right level of, of excitement and passion on your team to get things done at the same level as you would as an entrepreneur. Articulated way, you know. So making sure that the work that we're doing, we're profiling well, that we're talking about the, uh, the evidence and the, the projects and the results that have come out of our process. Um, and not thinking it's just gonna happen overnight. We actually have to think and be deliberate about it.